Well, uh, happy Wednesday to my uh, Pine Tree family, Pine Tree Church of Christ, and any of those other people that happen to stumble across this, uh, this video on the World Wide Web. Um, this is a uh, video series that we've begun uh, to start uh, for our Wednesday night. Um, uh, kind of a replacing a void, I believe, that we, we have. Uh, Pre-COVID, we would meet on Wednesday nights and have class and all different topics and age groups and all that, and I, and I miss it. Oh, I miss Wednesday nights. Um, I needed that uh, that refresher midweek. Um, you know, my, my life, I, I, I'm, I'm usually traveling, going all over the place, and boy, uh, I, would, I would be in some another state on a Wednesday night and and I'd go worship and I needed it to be around brothers and sisters and and uh, and then when I'm home I need it when I'm it's just that, that recharge I miss it I miss it so this is what this is about uh, we're having a little bit of, of a video series for that and uh, Jody Jody Gardner our, our pulpit minister asked me if I would be willing to to do a talk uh, I don't know, about a month ago, three weeks or so ago, and I said, yeah, sure, that'd be great, and I, I began the process of taking notes and writing an outline and doing a little bit of research, and I ended up throwing it all away. Some happened to me this past week, and um, what, the, what, what, what it was, not bad, nothing bad happened. Um, I bought a boat. <laughs> um, I bought a a bad boat. I, uh, well, that's relative. I bought a an old 44-year-old tri-hull fiberglass called a Tomboy John Boat. It's old. Cost me $300. <laughs> um, the trailer's worth twice that, so I think it came out pretty good. In any event, uh, as I haul this thing to the house and um, start to clean it up, clean it up, uh, this whole follow me theme that Jody had begun started to form in my mind. So I ended up throwing out my other stuff. I want to use this boat uh, in my talk. Um, there's two things that, that I thought about immediately when, I'm, when I began to, to, to work on this thing. And I haven't done a lot of work. I've had some other projects I had to finish, and I promised my wife I would do those before I started on this. And so I've only done just a, a little teeny bit, taking out all the trash and sweeping it up and that kind of stuff. Nothing mechanical yet. Two things, two thoughts came into my mind. One, as I'm beginning this project, I'm just sweeping it. I'm already loving it. I'm already loving the results that I'm seeing. Oh. And it made me think, as I'm enjoying myself preparing this this boat, um, what would happen if Jesus walked up to me and said, "Hey, Craig, come follow me"? Oh, uh, I just started. <laughs> I just started a new project. I haven't got the thing in the water yet. I haven't got the fish out of it yet. Well, that instantly made me think of Simon, Peter, and Andrew, who were fishermen, much like myself, and uh, uh, and how their response was. But they were different kind of fishermen, mind you. They were subsistence fishermen, and, and they were cast net fishermen. I think it'd be <laughs> they would look at me with, you know crazily if i showed up and started throwing a line a, a rod and reel and a lure in the water I'm like why are you doing it that way uh, different kind of fishing but fishermen nonetheless so i think i can relate to them in this manner at least but they dropped everything man well i just started this project i, I get a lot of i enjoy these projects i had a, i bought a, a little trailer I don't know, a couple years ago, two years ago, my wife and I liked to kayak. So we bought this little trailer so I could carry my kayaks in it. Well, it was not designed for carrying kayaks. So I found joy and pleasure in converting this dilly trailer into a kayak trailer. 
I think I found more joy in doing that than I, than I did actually kayaking. And I'm kind of looking forward to getting this boat up to seaworthiness. So what would I say? So again, I think about Simon and, and Andrew and, and this is just a hobby to me. By the way, if you if you want to know that story, that's that's in Matthew four nineteen, and uh, Jesus walks up to these fishermen and he says, "Come, follow me. I'll make you fishers of men." So not only did they do it, not only did they drop their nets and follow him. This is their livelihood. This is their careers. This is their job. This is their their income. This is every. This is their life. This is just a hobby for me, and I don't even want to get. Uh, well, I don't want to. I don't want to stop. <laughs> I just started. How would I respond? Well, here's the thing. How would you respond? Here's the thing. You don't have to wait for Jesus to walk up to you and ask you. He's already asked you. It's already asked me, right? It's already done deal. How have you responded? How have you responded? That's the real that's the real question to that's the real question. Yeah. So you got to answer the question. <laughs> How have you responded? And what about the statement I'll make you fishers of men? That's the big part of it. So even if you've said, yes, I'm going to follow you, Jesus. Have you begun fishing for men or people? Men in the broader sense of the, of the term humans. Have you begun fishing? We can't just follow Jesus. We have to do what he did. He fished for men. That was the first thing I thought about. The second thing I thought about was the worthiness of this $300 boat. Well, <clears throat> as I began to clean it up, got my broom, here's my, here's my broom, I got my broom. <laughs> I started sweeping up the carpet and took all the junk out of it and it was full of hooks and old fishing lures and line and and seats that had rotten and, and leaves and organic material was just disgusting i swept it up and i was like wow it's not as not that bad not as bad as i thought well that made me think <laughs> as i'm cleaning up this old boat it made me think of baptism it made me think of that cleansing property of being buried in baptism and coming up and my sins are washed away as I clean this little boat up, I think about, I thought about that. The worthiness of it. Was it worth my time to buy this little boat? To put my, my effort, my, my, my resources, my time, my elbow grease into this boat? That made me think about, do we often think that way about people? Are they worth it? Do some people think that way about themselves that they're not worth it? A lot of metaphors going on in this little this little john boat that i purchased for three hundred dollars let me tell you another story about another john boat about 25 years ago i'm gonna say 25 in that in that time frame melissa and i were a pretty young married couple we had uh we had kyle uh we may have had anna anna may may have been with us i don't remember um, if she was there or not. But I remember what happened. We had gone to chick I think Anna was there, now that I'm running through my mind. I think Anna was there. We had gone to Chick-fil-A, and the kids were playing in the little playhouse thing that, that they had there at the time. I believe it's still there. And uh, we met a couple. They were easy to spot. Her hair was so blonde, it was almost white. Uh, uh, and and they are easy to see. And their little boy, his name, his name was Ashton. And his hair was just like his mama's, but it was curly. He was a cute little kid. And their names were, were, were Mark and Carrie. And I just told you the little boy, Ashton. I won't tell you their last name. That's, I didn't ask for, for permission to uh, talk about him. So 
But we met them and we became fast friends. And Mark and I had a lot in common. Uh, he was in the military, he's in the Marine Corps and I had just gotten out of the Air Force. And um, we, we struck up a pretty fast friendship. And they had moved to the area recently and we lived in Gilmer at the time or on Greenway and and uh, there was a house for sale and guess what they bought that house so they ended up moving right down the road from us maybe four houses down spent a lot of time with them of course we invited them to church they weren't Christians at the time and uh, they came well let me get back to the John boat there was a John boat in my life at that time that a lot of you listening to this video have been in and it is a john boat at john and lucille spencer's pond i believe at this point john had probably passed at this point uh, which is whew, that was rough uh, but mark and i spent quite a lot of time in that john boat much like some of you that are watching this have and you know the exact john boat i'm talking about and we studied, and we prayed, and we talked. You know what happened? I ended up baptizing Mark at the church there in Gilmer. And a beautiful thing happened right afterwards. I stepped out of the baptistry, and his wife stepped in. He turned, and he baptized his wife. Wow. It was powerful, let me tell you. All from a beat-up John boat. A lot of things can happen, right? A lot of hours had been spent fishing out of that John boat, paddling around. How many hundreds of people had paddled around that little pond in that John boat? Fishing, laughing, giggling. I've taught my kids to fish in that pond. I've got pictures of my kids little holding up bass and blue that we caught out of that pond. But the best thing, soul saved too. Connection between that boat being fishers of men. That was awesome. So I think about this little boat, is it worth it? Are people worth it? Are people worth your time and energy and effort? Doesn't matter if it's full of trash and organic material that's rotting or leather seats that have holes in it and that can all be cleaned and removed what kind of things do we have in our lives addiction and disease and divorce and all sorts of horrible things that happen in our lives but you know what a little bit of elbow grease can fix that god can fix it we have to go find those people. They need Jesus. We all need Jesus. If you think you don't need Jesus, guess what? You're wrong. You're lying to yourself. You need Jesus. We need to find those people. We need to share Jesus with them. We're all old beaten up boats. Right? Everything has value. Everybody has value. If you don't believe that, I, I don't, I don't, I can't do anything about that. But we do. We have value. We need to sh find those people, share Christ with them, help him help. Once they learn about Jesus, he can begin to clean up process. We can't do it. God can. Christ can, and He did. He did it. You know, how He did it. He died on a cross. He hung there on a brutal, brutal cross. Because of our sins. My sin. Craig Rapp's sin. Oh, I hate that feeling. Because of my stupid sin, he hung on that cross. But people need to understand that, that, that he did that for us. He did it. We just need to find him and share it with him. You know, we go all over the world. We send people to Ghana and to Toga and to El Salvador and Honduras. 
Japan. Heck, I went to Germany one time. But you know what? There's people all over right here. I drive through East Texas. I see old John boats sitting on a old beat up trailer. How many people got an old beat up soul in the house where that John boat's sitting? Right? Don't discount them. You all have worth. So if you need something, if you need to be baptized, if you want to be clean, if you want your fiberglass re <laughs> smoothed out and painted over just like this old John boat, give me a call, would you? I'll come baptize you. We'll find a body of water somewhere and we'll immerse you and you'll come up clean, stripped free of all that garbage and waste and sin. It'll be gone. Give me a call. Find me. I can't wait to be back with my church family. I miss everybody desperately. I miss our potlucks. I miss our chili cook-offs. I miss our Wednesday night services. I miss seeing people's faces. I'm tired of seeing masks. We're missing so much by not seeing a full face. Even in this two-dimensional image you're looking at, there's subtle clues you're, we're all missing, you know that we, we, we use as communication uh, as humans. And I'm ready to get back to live contact. I miss contact. It'll happen. So I encourage you, if you need something, please give me a call. In the meantime, go out there and share Christ with everybody that you can. I love you. I can't wait to see you all again. Take care.